With the release of Overwatch 2 comes controversy at Activision Blizzard, at business models over the game. And you know what? Yeah, it's kind of busted on that end. With new characters, 5v5 gameplay instead of 6v6, and maybe a campaign one year, it's easy to see how broken Overwatch 2 really is. Some characters are way overtuned. I will break you. Diva is on top of the leaderboards of the game, and skins cost more than my life. With all of this in mind, it's still not a bad game. In fact, it's more fun right now than they brought in you know who. But it did get me thinking about the original Overwatch and just how busted the game used to be. Some heroes you know to be unbelievably broken, but back then they were never picked and the opposite of that is for others. I think it's important we go back to the time when the game was new. Nobody knew what to do and all of your teammates were poo poo. Welcome to Vanilla Overwatch. We are hope. We are honor. We are courage. We are justice. We are compassion. We are determination. And we are Gamersups. This month is Christmas month. And just because some things are broken doesn't mean you can't fix it with some gamer subs, baby. I know your favorite waifu is D.Va or the blue one. Ooh la la. Well, let me offer you a whole range of waifu cups and merch at Gamer Subs. Code Evan not only gets you a fat discount, but it helps you stay caffeinated without any crash and burn, just a straight line of energy. There's also non-caffeinated for the same price and 20 extra servings. That's 36 cents per serving with zero calories, zero sugar, keto friendly, and no bullshit. Use Code Evan to at least get a starter kit. You can use code 300K if you want to try some free samples too. Thank you, and let's get back to the broken state of vanilla Overwatch. Let's take it back to 2016. The battle raged on if Overwatch or Battleborn was going to be the next big game to play. Paladins was another game, but you'd be dumb to think a brand new Blizzard IP that wasn't a mobile game was going to be awful. Overwatch released with critical and fan acclaim on May 24th of 2016, and it primed itself to be the next TF2 with a competitive scene on the way. Everyone was a log and didn't know how to play as a team. Uh, can you not be Hanzo, dude? So what did Blizzard do about the team play? Well, I did just say nobody knew team play, not even Blizzard. So everyone was just a big dumb raid boss. Need the first of many examples? This was the original Roadhog hook. <laughs> Do I need to say anything else? I miss this hog. Boss hog. Big hoss. Whatever you want to call him, Hook 1.0 was the antithesis of living in vanilla Overwatch. Now, he wasn't all perfect though, as you couldn't move while healing and his hook was pretty inconsistent on where it put other players. Roadhog is now just a big bullet sponge that is really good if you can land your hooks. But nothing was like this. You know who else was a giant annoyance, but on the other end, Mercy. Mercy now can fly in her ult and has a res on pretty long cooldown, but back in the early days of Overwatch, hell, for a pretty long time, you'd scream at your teammates to find the Mercy or the whole game flipped. This was especially bad on two CP maps where you'd be close to pulling off a win and you'd see those wings and a heroes never die. Then poof, all five players got rezzed. Mercy had a 30% damage buff for her teammates, but you could stack it with other mercies. Imagine the one hit KO potential. My next Mercy would eventually get reworked, but we can't forget about how chaotic fun this hero used to be. Especially with Pharaoh, where it was so unbelievably strong, since Overwatch players cannot hit pencils in the sky. Zenyatta, hello, other than having this freaky slow mo animation, <laughs> was also bittersweet. Sure, his Discord orbs did 50% debuff on the target, which is absolutely busted, especially with a damage buff from Mercy, but his healing was still very low. A big trade-off. I do think Zenyatta was actually worse back then. He had a lot less mobility. His kicks couldn't push things forward. But this Zenyatta doesn't exactly have 50% debuff now, does he? Now, me personally, I use Widowmaker because I am a good teammate. 
Widowmaker used to be so strong, 150 damage per body shot, that it made her a menace. Still the best team play character, and you should pick her every time. Especially if you play against me. Be a real shame if you didn't pick her. Hanzo was as simple as scatter arrow, meaning free kills, as he was easy to get kills with. Hanzo's scatter arrow ability is now gone because all you had to do was bounce an arrow off the ground and it was a magnet to the head of anyone there. McCassidy used to be absolutely insane. Before his left click was buffed and before he got a sticky nade that is debatably overpowered as hell, this dude had the ability to fan the hammer of every tank in the game. Simply throw your stun, yeah he used to have a stun, right click, roll, right click, and everyone was dead. I swear, if you pocketed him, he was good for 60 a game. Nowadays, he's still really good. And they even added the ability to roll while you're in midair, so you get booped off the map way less than before. But back then, you'd be stupid to get near him. Just like it was stupid to get near a McCassidy, it was just as stupid to get near a Symmetra, because you'd pay for it with a lock on beam. Symmetra now has a straight fire left click beam, but in vanilla Overwatch, this was latched onto you like your inner demons. <sighs> Anyway, Symmetra was just as wild in a different way as, as her old super was her teleporter. But instead of a simple line of sight one, like we have now as an ability, this was instead a teleporter from spawn to wherever she wanted it to be. Meaning you could flip a whole match with just a teleport. Her turrets weren't as strong, but she could place six turrets at the same time. However, since they needed to be placed instead of flung, it was a little less annoying, and her right click was very slow to charge. But that latch and that TP, and especially if you let a Symmetra set up on the point, it was nightmare fuel. Zarya may be an actual raid boss now, but for her to get there, they had to dig up the fossil that was vanilla Zarya. She had faster ult charge, about 40%, which if you know anything about Zarya's ult, you know this is a massive part of why she's picked, and it was 25% larger. She could charge 50% per bubble, had a glitch that no matter what, she was getting 50% charge, and was doing about 11% more DPS per tick. Zarya overall was freaking insane. Vanilla Overwatch was incredibly interesting, because while there were some busted heroes, there were some equally goofy and disposable ones too. So let's talk about Overwatch's worst heroes, the bad and the ugly. A bad hero basically means that they weren't going to get picked in any meaningful game. They might have some fun quirks to them, but these were the underpowered and underwhelming in Vanilla Overwatch. I love you to death, buddy, but Winston mains understand all too well he was unusable in the vanilla game. Sorry about that. Damage was weak and so was the bubble, especially in the original meta. Winston eventually would become really good, but he was not it in vanilla Overwatch. Hi there. Wait, I changed my mind. This is going to be the theme for the bad heroes of vanilla Overwatch, because D.Va was also awful on launch. No missiles, the guns were awful, no double melee when hitting the jets, and the ult killed you if you were in line of sight. Oh, let me clarify. The ult killed you as D.Va in line of sight. Imagine dying to your own ult in Overwatch. I don't want to talk about it. Blizzard would handwrite that apology because D.Va is insane in Overwatch 2's release. Junkrat is annoying. <laughs> But I just felt bad for the dude in vanilla. His tire was slow as hell, and his traps had no range when you threw them. His grenades were the size of peas, and you'd be lucky to hit someone directly. It was just pretty awful. Junkrat would get a massive buff after Blizzard liked how much movement he could have with his mines, and his tire would get an even bigger buff. But we'll never forget this version of Junkrat. That edgy guy was the one I struggled to call bad, but Reaper wasn't really good in vanilla. Sure, his ult was solid and his shotguns did decent damage, but his teleport took forever and he couldn't cancel his wraith form, making his movement and speed very limited. Reaper's worst part may have been the self-healing, relying on orbs to heal himself from dead bodies instead of an intrinsic heal from kills, which now heals 35% of all damage done. Again, he had his uses and Blizzard would just sort of speed up the character. But no matter what updates, you can't stop him from yelling at the other team that he's flanking. Flanking.
The other thing about Overwatch is that with all this broken, scuffed experiment, you'd often forget that it's still Blizzard making a brand new game. So there's still bound to be some pretty balanced heroes. Some of these heroes we still see mostly balanced, with only small changes like Reinhardt. Sure, his shield is stronger, but Overwatch used to be 6v6, not 5v5 with one tank. They needed to do that. Reinhardt had some jank with his ult not working in certain elevations and working a little too well in other circumstances. But other than less of the same abilities, Ryan never really changed. Damn good hero. Feel my power! The same can be said for Miss Covergirl herself, Flying Lady, and Boop Healer. The only change Soldier 76 had was his gun, going from RNG hitscan bullets to a projectile spread, meaning he's a bit closer to Sojourn now, but let's be real, Blizzard combined the holy trinity of broken shit when they made her. Right on the money. Soldier used to have a bloom that would send bullets all over. Now he has a recoil like you'd see in other FPS games. Sojourn has the spread he used to have. You know, reworks are also interesting too. And while some heroes are mostly balanced, others had some changes to them that would fundamentally shift how they were used. So let's talk about the remaining five from Vanilla Overwatch. Torbjorn was never broken, nor was he bad. He was just good for one major thing. Come get your armor! Torb used to throw packs of armor for his teammates, and even had a whole system of scrap he could pick up and throw. It was really cool. You may wonder what the hammer is for. It's not just to keep the turret alive, it was to upgrade this level 1 to a level 2. For results, level 3 turret to go with the angry little guy, who had a faster fire rate on his ult, and the turret just melted. Now Torb, um, well, I guess he gets a little excited for his ult. Now Torb's been watching a little bit too much D.Va and gets a little excited for his ult. Some small but very impactful changes come with Mei losing her freeze ability from the left click, but her ult is a wider radius now. Overall, the freeze is a small change with a massive impact on how you play the hero. Genji felt this too, with his double wall climb and wall tech being removed. He could also launch himself by dashing into an edge and going to the moon. These were more skill moves and glitches that players found, but without it, Genji lost a lot of his extra extra movement strength. Dude was already annoying to hit, but this made it damn near impossible without a mixed stun. Whoa there. Bastion has seen so much change. With a shield on his turret mode before the release of the game being removed, hell, his turret form isn't stationary in Overwatch 2. He used to have a self-heal, and his ult was a mobile tank, the way turret mode is now. Bastion even had his regular gun change in Overwatch 2, but I never found the original Bastion to be broken strong, just mostly annoying if you didn't jump on him. Bonus round! Also, one hero was added shortly after the launch of the game, with Anna being the first support burst healer. And although she wouldn't see a lot of changes, I remember playing Xbox Overwatch 1 when Blizzard didn't have aim assist on Anna. It was a damn nightmare. They then added an aim assist slider to make her like a magnet to your teammates. There you go, PC players. Yes, aim assist is real and it's magnets. Anna's only issue was her heal, only going to one hero and not to others. But she was mostly a good addition. No scope needed. The last time we'd really see a hero come out and not break the game. Speaking of broken, the first competitive Overwatch scene. I mean, it was so bad. You think competitive is annoying now? Never forget the first integration of comp, where it worked on a scale of 1 to 100. 1 being the bottom, 100 being the top. It all just worked on an odd number scale where you could game the system of, uh, well, the game. The other part is, you can play comp with any number of heroes at the same time. Meaning, yep, 6 Mays, 6 Torbjorns. You having fun yet? That was Vanilla Overwatch, a broken yet experimental time. It felt like gaming was on the cusp of a new era, and Overwatch's influence no doubt would inspire a whole wave of games we currently play. It sucks to see Blizzard fall in the sword of monetization when Jeff Kaplan and the development team fought so hard to restrict Overwatch's monetization the first time around. Seriously, they had to fight for no individual hero payment. But with Overwatch 2 being free to play, I guess I'm happy more people get to experience it. I think one day having a Vanilla Overwatch week would be really fun for the game, but what do I know? If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, do all that, and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time, everyone.